Hey guys, Joe Pazinski here with Advanced Innovations. I am going to address a couple of questions and a couple of my own concerns on modeling a true thread. Now there's a lot of guys online that will show you how to model a thread, but if you want a gauge perfect thread, a real thread like you would cut on a machine, this is about the only technique that I know of that I've ever used or developed that will allow you to do that. And you might say, what's the big deal? How come you want a gauge perfect thread on a model? Well, if you have some type of assembly that has a lot of nuts and bolts on it, like an airplane, and you want to know exactly how much that airplane is going to weigh, well, you're going to want your hardware to be an accurate model. So let's see if we can do this. Uh, anybody that's ever run a thread, it's really not all that hard. In the upper left-hand corner, you know, I've taken the liberties of actually making it. This is a one-inch diameter bolt here. This is Pro-E Wildfire 2.0. Up here in the upper left, I hope you can pick up on this because I'm shooting this with a tripod mounted Nikon camera. Uh, go for insert, helical sweep, cut. We're going to go with constant through axis and right handed. That's a pretty conventional set of definitions for a right handed standard thread. Constant thread, it's not going to change to pitch like a spring would. Uh, through axis means it's going to be uh, around the axis of the bolt. Right handed is self explanatory, so we're going to hit done. Let's pick the plane that we're going to draw on. I like the, the arrow that shows up right here in the center, is a good orientation, so we're going to say OK, top. I'm going to pick the top of the bolt just because it's a whole lot easier to do. Now, running a helical thread on anything at this point is pretty much a no brainer. It's it's easy to do. You just make a center line, you make a trajectory, you make a cross section, and you're done. But there's a lot of other things to consider. And I'm going to flip over to this page right here, where we're going to identify the characteristics of the thread. It's a one inch diameter thread. There are eight threads per inch. It is a 2A thread. So the 2A pitch diameter from the machinist handbook is 910 to 916.8. The minor diameter or the root diameter of this external thread is 0.8446, but we're going to go with half that value when we draw. We're going to want to know the, uh, the radius value of that. And if you go to uh, MSC or any of the industrial supply catalogs, you can get yourself a set of pitch wires. If you're an engineer or a machinist, it's a really good idea to have pitch wires or at least a pitch wire chart in front of you. Uh, for the construction or even cutting a thread on an engine lathe. So for measuring a one inch diameter eight pitch thread you're going to use 072 diameter wires and the constant is uh, 0.10775. Now when you measure uh, an external thread with wires you take the constant value which is given with the wire diameter and the wire diameter is driven by the number of threads per inch so this is kind of hard to keep track of but if you're looking at this online, by all means, just uh, cut and paste the screen and study this at your own leisure. But the measurement over the wires at the bottom, these values down the bottom, this first value here is the 910 value plus the constant. Uh, the, the max diameter is the 916.8 plus the constant. And the mean is just the equal distance between these two. So. Uh, plus or minus 0034, I believe there's a 6 and 8 tenths tolerance on a 1 inch 8. These radiuses for the models on the right hand side, this column right here is what I'm going to use to model this thread and I think you're going to like what you see so hold on. Let's get back to the Pro-E. Alright, right now it's going to say let's put in a center line so I'm going to right click my mouse, select center line in the menu. I'm going to lock onto the axis, go vertical with it, center click out, and right now it's still red. I'm going to right click again, and then one of the top two choices is delete or axis of revolution. I'm going to pick that as the axis of revolution. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to right click again, select line, and just going to start anywhere, anywhere on the bolt. It really doesn't matter. The little yellow arrow is which way the trajectory is going. I'm going to go vertical with it naturally because it's a uh, true to the center line. Lock it off right there. And I'm going to make sure the thread runs out 
off the end of the part and up here where my cursor is jumping around I'm just going to put in some random number let's say uh, 0 0.1 okay now when it asks you to draw the cross section uh, which is the, probably going to be the next step the trajectory that you have defined here ideally it would be nice if you could make this to be the root diameter of the thread now back here where I have minor diameter which is also the root diameter here's that 422.3 radius that I said I was going to use for the model so I'm going to use this 422.3 value right now and that's going to go right down here 0.4223 you know, it's really dark in here so bear with me 4223 okay you can see it shifts it out a little bit while it's red you can right click again and hit lock that way you can drag the trajectory around and no matter what you do left or right with your cursor it's not going to change the distance from the center line so it's a good idea if you have something critical and you're going to be bouncing it around lock it off okay so that's the trajectory that's the center line the section is next so it's not going to allow you to do anything here other than say I'm done with the center line I'm done with the axis so over here in your side menu hit your checkbox menu selection box is going to show up down the bottom and you can put in a decimal value for your pitch or you can just put in the OD which is 1 divided by 8 excuse me there it is and hit enter and it'll automatically put in the uh, 0.125 pitch that you're looking for and you can confirm that in the attributes section up here in the in the pitch in the upper right hand corner of your screen it'll show the pitch is 0.125 now the section when you define the section now it's going to get very uh, critical as far as if you want an accurate thread this is where the accurate thread is going to come from now the inside line is the root diameter or the minor diameter of the thread the horizontal yellow dotted line is where that particular trajectory ended in your when you defined your your sweep profile so now is where we now we use the uh, wire diameter and all the constants and everything that probably just confused you to no end all right first thing we're going to do is draw a circle now a lot of people go uh, you know how come you're drawing a circle if you're making a thread with a triangular tool but watch how this works it might actually be very helpful we're going to just draw it big because it's nice to start big and if you remember the size of the wire was 072 so let's put in 0 0.072 crank it down and don't pay any attention to how far it is off the trajectory off the center line uh, anything we're going to go tangent on this circle to the center line so light your circle up and turn it red right click go to construction now right now it's going to break apart and it's just going to be a bunch of dotted lines and it will not show up as any part of your actual physical geometry when you do your thread now I'm going to dimension this by using a point I'm going to go get a point over here on the side I'm going to go back to my lines I'm going to lock that point on to the diameter of the circle and the horizontal line that defined the end of my trajectory going to go get a dimension and I'm going to snap from the center line to that tangent point and put it in there okay now that's exactly what you want to see because if you were actually making this on an engine lathe and you put three wires on the OD of that thread and you measured it it's going to be a diameter so the only way to establish that you could put a diameter dimension in here but I'm going to use a radius dimension and let's go back and see what that radius dimension is radius dimension for the mean is down here because this pitch diameter right here is the mean diameter that I want to accomplish as a final model and it's this value right here that I'm going to use for the offset of that 072 wire defined right here and that wire diameter came from the pitch diameter chart that's available out there and I'm sure this is pretty confusing because if I was listening to it I'd be confused too so listen to it twice 510575 let's call this 
there's no need to go six decimal places on a cosmetic thread that has a seven thou tolerance. Okay, and you see it moves it in. That's a good thing because the wire is going to be subsurface to the OD of the thread in the real world. All right, let's put in, make sure none of your dimensions are still red. I'm going to put in a center line this way. I'm going to put in another center line this way. And you see the dimensions that show up on the screen? Lock them in at 30 degrees apiece. Here's a 31 way. Here's a 30 the other way. Okay, these are now reference lines. You're going to want to put a hard line in there. Right click and select line. And we get lucky and it lights up as tangent. So it's tangent to your circle right here and you want to lock it into the root diameter there's one on the other side let's do the same thing you want your parallel constraint to light up and you want it to be tangent as well if you can't get them both at the same time Then go get yourself a constraint value on this side. It's the little box of constraints. Go for parallel, which is the lower right on wildfire. Pick your line and your reference line, and it now says parallel. That's what you want to see on both of them. So we'll go here and here. All right, now we have two lines that are parallel to the construction lines that we built, with it terminating at the root diameter. Put another line in to close off the nose of the tool. Come back here to create the back side of the tool. Trim it so it's nice and clean. Alright, now we have an 072 diameter at a set distance from the center line with a tool with a flat on the nose of the tool that terminates at the root diameter given from the machinist handbook. The pitch is set to point 125 or 8. We're going to go over here and click it and pray that there is no faults. Now, although a lot of you guys are going to say, gee, how come he's above the surface of the part? You can constrain it to the OD of the part. That's not a bad idea. If you're not going to constrain it to the OD of the part, uh, be careful if these triangular sections overlap when you make your helix, it's going to fault out. So do not rule out this particular section of your triangle right here as it helix is up if this overlaps with the previous helix it's going to fault and you will have to move it back but right now mine is constrained to the OD of the 072 pin that's sitting in there I'm going to give it a click as an OK I like which way the material is coming off I'm going to say OK again and let's go for a preview now that's a beautiful thread that is a gauge perfect thread. I'm going to say OK because it looks absolutely beautiful. That is a one inch diameter, eight pitch thread. The root diameter defined by the trajectory and the, and the original center line axis of this thread is accurate. If we were to take and make a cross section of this thread and lay three 072 wires in there, one here one here and the third one down there and create that pinch measurement for your micrometer when you measured it and subtracted the constant this value right here your pitch diameter would be spot on in this range which is what you want to see when you measure over 072 diameter wires now I hope that wasn't too much for you if you have any questions by all means please post it in the bottom this is Pro-E Wildfire 2.0. This is a helical swept cut. This is a 1 inch 8 gauge perfect thread. And if you were to ever uh, assign a physical characteristic as to what type of metal this would be, the uh, mass property analysis of your model would be spot on with what it will probably weigh. Uh, that's it, guys. That's all I got for you. If you have any questions, post them. I will answer if I can. And thanks for watching.